Hey guys, Stephen here from Red Essence, and welcome back to another fragrance review. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a somewhat of an obscure fragrance. This one is by Tommy Bahama, and it's called Vintage Spice. So here's the bottle. I actually could not locate a year of release for this one, nor was I able to hunt down a perfumer. Jean-Claude Delville has worked on one of their compositions. Harry Fremont has helped this house with a few of their fragrances, one or a few. I, so I, I wasn't really able to find out who worked on this particular composition. And uh, it's not online. It's not on Fragrantica. It wasn't on any of the uh, fragrance forums that I took a look at. So I'm just going to basically go off of what I smell the information that I do have. Now, I bought this one at my uh, local shopping center. I was I walked into Tommy Bahama. For those of you who don't know, Tommy Bahama sells clothes. They have swimwear, footwear, accessories. They have uh, you know apparel for both men and women. And in 2005, they branched out into fragrances. And I bought this one about. Uh, two years ago. So this one was released sometime within the past 10 years, um, but not the past two years. And uh, this one, the reason why I bought it is because I tried it out and immediately it reminded me of another scent. And this is actually one that I used to wear all the time when I was younger. This is the second bottle that I ever owned, ever. And this one is by Abercrombie & Fitch and it's called Woods. Now, I think this one is still in production, different presentation, it has completely been reformulated, and uh, it reminded me so much of this scent that for nostalgic reasons, I ended up buying this one. It's actually my scent of the day today, so I'm actually getting a pretty good wearing out of it. Now, um, again, like I said, there isn't a whole lot of information online, so I'm basically going to tell you what I smell. I'm just going to trust my nose on this one, and first up, let's take a look at the presentation. So here on the box, you have the name of the fragrance, the name of the company, Men's Cologne Spray, written right here in the front, uh, 1.8 fluid ounces, 53 ml. You turn it to the side, you have a logo with the swordfish, and then on the back, made in the USA, and it says, an exotic holiday fragrance with notes of tea leaf, bamboo, burlwood, and Asian tea. So it doesn't actually list too many ingredients here. I know some other boxes, they say eugenol, citral, linalool, you know, Coumarin, this one just lists uh, these three up here. Uh, price tag down here at the bottom, I think I paid $45 for it, or maybe it was on sale, but uh, my box says $45. And uh, that's it as far as the box. I mean, plain cardboard. They're not actually trying to hide the fact that it's made out of cardboard. It actually comes off a little cheap to me, but nonetheless, that's the box. So here is the bottle. No cap on this one. This one actually does come with a stopper. It's a little hard to remove sometimes, but you know, whatever. It uh, prevents it from being pressed down if you're traveling with it. Now, the label here on the front, um, you're not having a hard time reading it because of my camera. It actually is a little bit blurry on the sticker. So it looks like this was printed off some guy's printer so not the best presentation but basically a reiteration of the stuff that you see on the box the atomizer on this one is actually pretty good though really nice distribution and you can control how much you want to spray and uh, that was a presentation for vintage spice by Tommy Bahama now, as you just saw in the presentation this fragrance according to the box only contains three notes it has tea it has bamboo and it has burl wood. And what I can say is that I think that's pretty transparent in its honesty. It's a pretty honest note breakdown. I think there's, of course, a lot more going on in this composition than meets the eye. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk about what I, what I get from this one. Now, I do think that the name is pretty appropriate. It's aptly named. Vintage spice, you are going to get a lot of spice from this one. I can't quite put my finger on what kind of spice I'm getting. Maybe a little bit of pepper, not too overwhelming, not like a Marc Jacobs bang. I'm getting maybe a little bit of nutmeg. Um, so it definitely has those spicy characteristics going on about it. And maybe perhaps even a little bit of eugenol, which is found in clove. It's also found in bay leaf. And it kind of gives this one an airy, minty sort of a smell. Now that could be coming from the bamboo because the bamboo kind of gives this fragrance that oriental, clean, green sort of a vibe. But I've tried another fragrance that has bamboo. I know Killian has a fragrance called Bamboo Harmony that has a strong bamboo note in it, definitely. And then there's one by Zoologist called Panda. That's probably the strongest bamboo that I've smelled. So this one, how does it rank up against those? Process of elimination, you know, this one is not the strongest bamboo uh, dominant scent. So uh, it does have the note in there, it's just not quite as strong as it is in those other compositions. And I'm not too familiar with burl wood, but if it's anything like ebony wood, and I'm sure it's not, you guys are going to let me know down below. But this one, maybe it is the woods that give it that sort of 
peppery, spicy kind of a vibe. Uh, I know I have another one by Tokyo Milk called Dead Sexy Number no. 6. That one contains ebony wood and surprisingly it does add a peppery quality. So I know that some woods have the potential or the ability of adding a spicy or a peppery nuance to the overall composition. Now tea, yes, there's definitely a tea note in here which is a little contradictory uh, to the name Vintage Spice. You think it's going to be spicy but it actually ends up being more herbal. Like that herbal culinary quality that you get from the eugenol or the clove. And then there's also a little bit of that tea in there, that bamboo, which kind of adds like this harmonious vibe to the entire composition. But there's this unmistakable green element down below. And uh, I think it might be oak moss. And the reason I say that is because it does remind me a lot of the Abercrombie & Fitch fragrance that I just mentioned. So there are some green nuances down there, some woodsy coniferous sort of elements to it. So I think for that reason, this fragrance leans a little bit more mature. Um, the bamboo works a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more youthful, but not entirely. I don't think it's entirely successful. Overall, I do think that this is a really nice scent. If you're into spicy fragrances and you like the note of bamboo, I, I think it's done pretty well in this scent and it's used in a modest amount. You know, it's not overwhelming or domineering or anything like that. And, but if you're buying this scent because you saw that it contains a note of tea and you like fragrances like Bulgari's Au Parfumé au Tevar, or you like um, Gucci Por Homme 2 or T for 2 by L'Artisan, this is a very different interpretation. The only thing that I like about this one is that it does, well, one of the few things that I like about it is it doesn't smell, you know, synthetic. It doesn't smell overly manufactured. This one actually does smell unique. And I was quite surprised because I have tried some other Tommy Bahama fragrances and they're like, uh, it kind of smells like other fragrances that I'm seeing in the designer industry. But this one actually does stand out. And I like Tommy Bahama. I, I actually do like this one. I like Set Sail St. Bart's. Um, I, I know there are some other ones out there that can be found at Macy's and whatnot. So give this one a try if you're into spicy scents. It is a little bit obscure, a little bit under the radar. Not one of my favorites, but I think there's something to explore here. So uh, last up, we have the rating. First up, we have uniqueness and overall smell, and I ended up giving this scent a 6 out of 10. Now, I do think that the scent itself is rather unique. Uh, it does smell a little bit mature, which kind of turned me off a little bit about the scent, but as far as the composition goes and the combination of the different ingredients, I do think that it adds an element of uniqueness to the composition. Burl wood, tea, you know, bamboo, I think it's pretty well done, and I was actually quite surprised that this isn't talked about a little bit more often, but the smell does lean a little bit too mature for my taste, so I ended up giving it a 6. As far as longevity on this one, I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. I do get about 6 to 7 hours with this one, so I was just generous there. Projection on this one is actually pretty good, but I gave it a 6 out of 10. Uh, again, with this compositional nature, you really don't want to choke anybody out. You don't, want to be, you don't want it to be too strong. So with this one, it does radiate within an arm's length, never beyond an arm's length. And I want to say maybe for like an hour and a half to two hours, and then it starts sitting closer to the skin. But I do think it's a stronger projector than Set Sail St. Bart's or some of their other aquatic citrusy summery releases. As far as versatility on this one, yet again, it's a 6 out of 10. I do think that for the lack of performance and because of the tea and the bamboo it's kind of evocative of the uh, hotter weather so I probably wouldn't wear this in the dead of winter but you can definitely pull this off in the fall because of the uh, spicy nuances I think I would probably wear this one casually definitely not wear it on a night out I I, I would definitely be taking a risk there and uh, maybe semi formally but not formally I doesn't really have that presence for me and uh, it is masculine um, it does have that masculine vibe about it because of the spices in the woods um, and I do think that it is geared toward an older crowd, even though, unfortunately, it does smell so similar to Abercrombie and Fitch Woods. And that was like one of the first fragrances that I ever owned when I was like 10 years old. But yeah, I do think that this one leans a little bit more towards the older crowd. But again, you know, it's just a recommendation. You might smell it. You might fall in love with it. You might be like a, I don't know, a 14-year-old girl and you're like, oh, I like this. So wear what you want, wear what makes you happy, of course. And last up, we have the presentation. I ended up giving this one a 6 out of 10 for presentation. And overall, I'm going to give Vintage Spice by Tommy Bahama a 6 out of 10. It, you know, it had it coming. It's a good fragrance. Um, I do think it has a mature vibe about it. Uh, I think the, uh, presentation is very low-key but I do think it's a nice smell and if you're a fan of bamboo and a spicy bamboo at that not the traditional cool bamboo note that you typically get in fragrances 
don't know. Give this one a try. You might actually like it. For me, not entirely my taste, but I think it's a solid fragrance nonetheless. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you owner have tried Vintage Spice, I would actually be surprised. So please let me know by leaving a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos. So again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. This has been Steven with another fragrance review from Red Essence. We'll see you soon.